Hi, I'm Sherry, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the 10 things I wished I'd known before I began upcycling. Last night, I was watching the YouTuber's subscriber count go up, and it was almost at 100, and I started getting teary-eyed, and I thought to myself, how can I help everybody have the best upcycling experience possible? Like to give them the best chance to create the best garment and that's when I started thinking that this needs to be taught like or spoken about or whatever right now because you know before everybody just jumps that comes to the channel that just jumps in because there is a little bit of a learning curve and I'm going to make another video called like something like the mindset of upcycling because there is a mindset to it that I learned. So stay tuned and we will grab a beverage or something and let's talk about it. All right, the first thing I wished I would have known is that I have a list here I'm gonna follow. Most, most upcycled tops have two, just two basic principles. When you, if you go look on Etsy, you'll start noticing this. Most upcycled tops are a top, cut off and something added sometimes it's cut this way different heights you know split down the side but they take a top you cut the top you add something so that really breaks down the complication because you look at it and there can be like 50 pieces on a top but if you really b break it down to basics you find a nice top and then you're going to cut it off or and add something so that helps you, for me, that helps simplify the visualization of the process. And so that's my first tip. All right. My next tip. The next tip is something, I'm a farm girl, okay? I grew up on a ranch and a farm and I'm not a, I don't know how you say it. I'm not a fashion buff per se. <laughs> you want to say that I'm not glitzy I'm not girly I'm somewhere between tomboy and cowgirl <laughs> so, so I chuckle when I think and I tell my kids can you believe I'm a fashion designer <laughs> so this tip was essential for me to to get and so I'm thinking there may be some of you in the same boat is color coordinating a piece was really difficult for me. I spent more time trying to pick out the right colors for a top than actually putting the top together. Let's say I had the concept. I was going to cut something off. I was going to add this, do this, this, whatever. I couldn't find the right colors. So I finally figured it out to let the professionals do it for you. <laughs> Go get a piece of fabric or print that you really like. Like, let's say you really like this one. And then all your colors are right there. Then just go in. You may not even use the original piece, but I do this all the time. I'm like, okay, this is what goes with orange. <laughs> I know this. I know this seems elementary, and like most people probably just already know this. But for me, this was a huge learning curve, and I still struggle if I have a real busy top. Like I'd rather have a plainer color top and add the colors in the bottom of it. To me, it just works better. And and so get you, find something you really like. You might, and another thing is, oh, this is another tip I need to add in here on color coordinating. Take, let's say you have, you wanna make a garment up and you wanna use a piece of fabric like this in it, or you have a shirt like this and you wanna make a garment with it. Take a swatch of it with you when you go like to the flea markets or your goodwill or garage sailing, take a swatch of it with you and or and so that you have it on hand to get your colors right. Because you'll think, oh, I have an orange, that's orange, but there are so many shades of orange. There's, you know, and some of them really clash, especially you get into pinks and things like that. I find a lot of them really clash. For me, anyways, in my eye, everybody's different. But that's, that saved me hours and hours of work is just that one tip alone and i definitely think that's one of my top tips hope it helps okay tip number three 
this one too should have been rather elementary and and easy for me to understand as I was looking through page after page of Etsy upcycles. I wanted to do upcycling. I didn't know where to begin. And I've sewn most of my life. Like I, I started sewing when I was a little girl. My mom sewed all of our clothing. So sewing wasn't the hurdle for me. The hurdle for me was how do I do this? I saw it and, and I love to make things and I thought I want to do this. And um, I don't even know how many years I've been doing it, but it's more than five. I've been doing upcycles. So, <laughs> I don't know, look at my list here. It's called the triangle. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but when you cut off the top, when you cut the top off, if to make the garment flow nice, you're each when you sew pieces on, they need to be either gathered like a wide piece with some gathering. Or you'll need to do several things. You'll need to have like triangle shapes as you sew them together. And the reason why it makes the garment push kind of outward. And I'll show you how to do this in upcycling. This is one of the top tips is that you add pieces. That's why I like the sleeve tunic works. Because you have, the, the, they, they're narrower to wider. And so it flows nice. When you turn, you've got movement, you've got room in the garment. So I didn't know that at first. So I had a lot of very... St like you know you just couldn't move right in them they didn't look right and I'm like what is wrong so the triangle is it's huge <laughs> so that's tip number three oh here's tip number four I broke so m I still break needles <laughs> let's just be honest here but the reason you break a needle is because you're when you're sewing you're usually coming through something really thick or you're coming up at an angle and the machine what the machine and the foot do they it may, makes this needle move out of alignment and it snaps it off so what I didn't understand let's say I was going to come up like this and I'm let me put on a straight stitch here and I come up here see it can't and you see the struggle take something they sell something like this for this but you can use a button i've actually used one of my favorite things is half a clothespin lift your foot up put that behind it and now you've got a flat surface you can watch i can just go straight across see where before it couldn't get up there so raise the back of your foot to the height of whatever you're sewing and it works up to a point, like you can't obviously, because you can only get so much under these, like on this machine, its foot only raises so high anyways. But I've found as long as I build that up, I can basically go through however much I can stuff under it. And that has ma makes a big difference, especially if you're sewing denim. I sew a lot of denim waist bands on as, you know, as pieces, to sew a lot of denim pieces on to regular cloth. And when you've got to go from a a lower fabric to a taller one it just makes it so much easier and I don't know how long I struggled with that till I figured that out so that is that made a big difference for me so I hope that helps somebody right there all right and for tip number five you need to get yourself a friend now I suggest <laughs> I suggest a cheap mannequin of some kind because you can put the outfit on it it doesn't have to be your size. You put the outfit on it. You can tell if the straps are right. You can see what it looks like. If your pockets are where they ought to be. It really helped me. When I got a mannequin, it made things so much easier. I can pin, like, let's say I'm, I'm taking a piece of garment. I can just lay it over. I can pin it right to this. You know, so I can just play with ideas. You know, and kind of see what it would look like on someone. I do have a bigger one here, but this sort of mishmash. Like, I got the top really cheap. I tried to add a base. I needed a plus size one. So this is my plus size lady. I, I need to upgrade her. But that's my... Uh, one thing that really helped me and really helped change my upcycling was just getting a mannequin. Okay, tip number six that really made a difference for me was a serger. Because with a serger, I could all of a sudden just serge around like a pocket and sew it on. It made it super fast. I actually like the outlined look. Like I like to use, and I have one for each color. Of the, I pretty much use just black and white thread. And that makes it so simple for me. <laughs> it makes it so easy because 
I can just serge it, uh, a seam, slap it on top of another seam, sew it down, and it's just a game changer. You, it goes so fast. They're easy to use once you learn how the threading on them. And I, and I love the fact that you can get big discount spools and use them on your sewing machine too. That's important. So, but that is, was a game changer for me in sewing up cycle clothing. Tip number seven is have some good tools. The number one thing I suggest as a really mean, heavy duty, good quality pair of shears. Now, something you can sharpen because especially if you're gonna do it a lot, if you're doing it just for yourself, you can get by with something less. But if you're gonna upcycle a lot, especially jeans, I suggest a really good pair of scissors. And believe it or not, I got these off Timu for like $9. So it doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. You just go look around. I also have these. Uh, these are Ginger, I think they're, and I've used these for years. I have a big sharpening stone and I actually just sharpen my own scissors. It's not hard and you'll know they need sharpen because when you go to cut, you just shove your fabric. <laughs> so like, I can't catch it. So then it's like time to sharpen. But I also suggest getting something just to quickly snip your strings especially I do a lot of which I'm going to show everybody how I do my eventually my patchwork because my patchwork is different than most people's on Etsy and and people love it I want to show you on these one of the tips you can do is these little blades are replaceable right on these this style but you I can't find them so I figured out the other day, I can actually take these off and sharpen them. If you're real careful, you can actually sharpen them or use the scissor sharpeners that you pull these through will also sharpen them. And of course you want a really good seam ripper. Having a sharp one, don't use an old one. A nice sharp seam ripper makes a big difference. And lately, what I've discovered is a razor blade and I keep it because <laughs> I don't want to count myself. But one of these um, for denim, uh, I don't use it on lighter fabric, but for denim seams, it'll cut them really fast. And then if you need to remove a button, you can go on top of the button and do a little crisscrossy. And you can take that button off way faster, and way easier than a seam ripper. And then the other one, of course, is get a good sewing machine you like. Get one that you feel like is, I don't want to say it's your buddy, but you know, you're going to be spending a lot of time with it. Something you don't have to fight. Something that the that you know it's easy to use a joy to sit with and i prefer the older styles that aren't complicated they don't have a bunch of gadgets to break on them it's got a straight and a straight and a zigzag you know i love my little bernina and uh, i found it on ebay it looked like it hardly had even been used and that's the one i sell with mostly i have other machines but this is my best friend so in here okay let's see where are we at we are on Oh, number eight. This one, this one comes with a warning. <laughs> Probably all my videos should. <laughs> but this one, let people, when you start upcycling, let people, people know you're upcycling because it's hard to get rid of used clothing. It's a great way to get, especially if you're interested in particular things. Hey, you know, if you're going to donate those jeans, you know, I upcycle and make them something even out of it or, you know, and they'll be like, because people have a hard time getting rid of things. It will surprise you. I, I went to my local thrift store here. It's like put together by all the churches and they, I, I brought some things and she goes, I'm sorry, we can't take any more items. We are swamped. I looked in there and they just had tables stacked five and six feet high. I'm not kidding you. And so a lot of places, even the Goodwill and stuff, they're throwing things away. So letting your, you know, family and friends and stuff know you're upcycling. If you want, if you, I'm saying it can come with dangers because you can get totes and gobs of stuff and be overwhelmed yourself. So think about that before you tell them <laughs> you might get more than you bargained for. So that's tip number eight with a warning. Okay, tip number nine, and I, I didn't realize this, that when you create the basic garment, let's say it's like this, this basic garment, that is like the cake before the frosting. It's like, 
a canvas with, you know, an empty blank canvas kind of. It's the patches and the pockets and the decorations that you're adding that actually makes the design really pop and really come to life. So if you have a piece, let's say you have an Etsy store and you have a piece that's not selling or you have a piece you don't like and you say, why don't I like this? And you look at it, it's probably because it actually isn't finished. <laughs> I, I know this because I do this all the time. I'm like, wait, I just put it together. I didn't actually, you know, finish it. So if something isn't selling or whatever, or, or something you you made that you don't like, look and see, you know, ask yourself, why don't I like this, you know? And knowing that um, when you're putting a piece together, that once you get your main pieces together, that, you know, it's the little touches that really make it stand out. So I just want to point that out because I don't know how many times I've done that, and that's made a big difference. And the last one, it's not a big one, but I learned that buying things in bulk and doing sometimes things in bulk is cheaper. So like your thread, um, uh, probably my best example are, is using a big serger thread and then doing your like bobbins all at once. Like I, I wind all my bobbins at once and put them in here, let me grab it here. I also got this off, you know, I, I have to, but and just fill up cases like this because there's nothing worse than being in the middle of a design because the, Upcycling is an art. Upcycling is an art form in itself, and I want to get into the mind, kind of the mindset of it in the next video. But there's nothing worse than being in the middle of this design and having it flow, and you're putting it together, and you got to stop and wind bobbins, and <laughs> you lose your flow, like you you lose the juice that was going into what you were doing. So, I having everything prepared, like have your thread there, have your bobbins and all that and, and buying and having in bulk and ready can save you a lot of heartache and frustration as you're putting something together. It, it's very frustrating to be in the middle of a, pro, a project and then just running out of something basic like elastic or you know that you needed for that because then the, I don't know if it's a mojo or whatever it is that was going into that project is suddenly just fizzled out and you come back to you and go what was I even doing? <laughs> That's me anyways. <laughs> Everybody else may not have that problem. That might be a sherry only issue. So, but for me that was game ch a game changer when I just made sure I had some of these basic things ready and on hand right as I would need them as I'm in the middle of making this project. And I'm going to throw a freebie in here at the end that I just thought about that's not on my top 10. So I guess we're at top 11. Get yourself some and look for uh, fabric pieces that you can use for patches. I Sometimes I'll buy, it, it'll be newer fabric, I'll buy like a um, half a yard that might have birds on it or something. Just, it makes the piece interesting. I mean, the thing about upcycling is you're taking that, and this will go into the mindset one too, you're taking something and trying to, for me anyways, you, you're trying to make it new and exciting and give it a new life. But if it if it if it, people don't like it or you don't like it, then did you really do any favor to the items or the environment or however you want to look at it? If you just made something that nobody's going to buy or nobody wants or you don't want to wear, so to me, if you add a little bit of new splash on it, if you have to, to make it interesting, then it's worth it. So also an, another game changer for me was just getting some what I call cutter fabrics. It's like and I look for them, I look in the linen sections, I'll look and you know, you can find them used, but I also buy them new. And I think it the, the the pros outweighs the cons in my opinion on that. And so your garment may be ninety seven percent all upcycled materials, you know, or you know, clothing. But what good is it if it's a hundred percent and nobody ever buys it? Like you do see where I'm coming from. So I'm going to make the, the mindset one next and because I feel like that's very important, almost as important as my top 10 things, just to help, you know, just to help get a person's mind in, in the right space for what upcycling really is. So this is what it is to me. I'm, everybody might have different interpretations. <laughs> 
So thank you for watching. I hope some of this helped you and stay tuned for the next video and thank you everybody for liking and subscribing. You're also awesome and kind and I can't believe I was over a hundred when I made this one. So thank you, thank you so much and God bless you all and have an awesome day.